Okay, so we have a lot to talk about from August. Revolut have some major expansion plans for Latin America. We also have some big news from the FCA in the UK that could positively impact your savings. I'll also share with you the top savings and current accounts right now from around the world, and also a business account that I've personally switched to, which has some decent rates. But first, did you hear about the Bank of Ireland and their incredible generosity? They've been giving people free money. For a very short period of time only, customers with a low balance or no money at all were able to transfer up to a thousand euros to another account. In Ireland overnight, a bank technology glitch led to huge crowds flocking to ATMs. Of course, this was all just a glitch which actually came to light when the Irish police noticed a strange increase in activity at ATMs. All of a sudden, it's 3 a.m. and people are queuing to withdraw money and not because they want to buy a kebab. The police literally dispatched multiple officers to guard ATMs. So instead of protecting their citizens, they were protecting cash machines good use of resources. It does beg the question, did these people really think they'd be able to keep the money? As if the Bank of Ireland wouldn't go after them to get it back. I imagine anyone that attempted this ended up probably going overdrawn and being charged a percentage fee for the pleasure. As always, some of the mainstream media were able to find a way to tie this back to Revolut. Apparently customers were transferring the euros to their Revolut accounts before withdrawing them. Obviously that's no fault of Revolut and in fact really just highlights their popularity popularity as a secondary account. Speaking of Revolut, their campaign for world super app domination continues. This year, they've not only expanded into New Zealand and Brazil, but they're now destined for Latin America or LATAM. If you're into your acronyms, countries like Chile, Argentina, and Ecuador will be able to take advantage of Revolut Lite, which is like a simplified version of the app. And here's the cool part. They actually let people try it out for free, including sending money without fees. If LATAM is a success, it could have an overwhelmingly positive effect on Revolut's growth. Not only are there something like half a billion people living in this region, but as of 2021, 122 million of those were thought to be unbanked. Someone needs to call Nigel Farage because that is a lot of people without a bank account. All these people will need is a phone that's capable of loading the app so they can then send and receive money. What's great about this is it will allow them to receive money from Revolut accounts for free. That means if they have a family member working abroad in a place like Spain or Portugal, well, they can now receive money from them without paying any fees. I am so curious to see how this goes as I think it could be huge. It's actually quite smart as well because they've recognized that their conventional product just isn't suited for lesser developed countries, but that doesn't mean the tech infrastructure they've built can't be leveraged to gain access to these countries and help the people that live there. Although I do question the monetization aspect of this, like how do you generate revenue from a product that's very short of features and in places where there's little to no disposable income? It it will be very interesting to see how Revolut Lite develops. While we're on the topic of less developed countries, the UK's financial regulator, that's the FCA, published this review of the state of the savings market. As you can expect, it basically just reinforces what we already knew. Banks, in particular the big nine, are really greedy and didn't hang around when it came to increasing the interest rates on mortgages, but were a little slow to respond when it came to increasing their rates on savings accounts. Actually, a little slow is a serious, Serious understatement. By May 2023, the average SVR, which is around 10% of UK mortgages, was 7.08%. Easy access accounts were just 1.25. Shockingly, 60% of deposits at these banks are held in those easy access accounts, and 260 billion is held in accounts offering 1% or less. There are thousands if not millions of people out there with money earning less than 1%, and some of those people could probably do with a few extra quid each month, especially when you consider the price has increased on pretty much everything. Actually, not everything. I think oxygen is still free for now. But things are hopefully about to change. A new consumer duty came into force on the 31st of July. This is basically a standard of care created by the FCA that's meant to ensure banks put their customers first. It's hard to say that with a straight face. Part of the duty will be for them to inform their customers that there are better savings products available and the worst offenders will have to explain why their rates are so low. If their explanation is that they're just profiteering so they can buy an extra house in the Algarve, then the FCA will take action against them. They also intend to publish a review every six months listing the best to worst easy access accounts. That one I can't wait for. But honestly, this all comes a little too late. 
Over the past year, banks have quite clearly been profiteering off high interest rates, which has been tough on borrowers without any real benefit for savers. And while the FCA is finally taking action, it probably won't have an impact until late this year or even early next, right around the time when interest rates might begin to go down. Like I mentioned, it's all a bit late in the day, but I guess doing something is still better than nothing. Unless, of course, you're a terrorist. The report also made it clear that the smaller firms or challenger banks have the better rates. As of the 31st of August, we now have easy access accounts paying 5%. Crew have also changed their current account, so it now tracks the base rate, and it currently pays 4.35%. Also, some of our favorite digital banks, such as Chase and Starling, have all increased the rates on their savings accounts. To be fair, it was about time Starling increased that rate, although we still have no easy access account from them, and their current account interest rate remains at 0.05%. For our European friends, things aren't looking too great for you either. Easy access accounts average 0.21% in May, which is well below the ECB rate. I would definitely recommend if you're from one of these countries that you check out Wise Interest. This isn't a savings account though, it's a low risk fund that invests in government backed assets. I've set it up myself and it is really easy to do. The great thing about it is that the interest rate you receive tracks the rate set by these central banks. And in certain EEA countries, you can get 3.19% on EUR balances. People in the UK can also get up to 4.82 on GBP, which is pretty good, especially as this is essentially easy access. You also have deposit insurance up to 20,000 euros and FSCS protection up to 85K. It's even available for businesses. And that's why I've switched my business banking to WISE. I only had to pay a one-off payment of 45 pounds and it also comes with your standard business banking tools. If you're interested in signing up, I'll put a link for both WISE personal and business in the description box. That is an affiliate link. So by using it, you'll be supporting myself and the channel. Of course, if you don't want to do that, then you can just support us by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Hope you enjoyed this recap and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.